Paul Reed was mentioned by name by Daryl Morey a couple times during that press conference. And we know the situation with Paul, that he signed uh, an offer sheet with the Utah Jazz last summer. They put an interesting clause in there where the final two years of the contract only become guaranteed if the Sixers, or at that point the Jazz as well, if that team had made it past the first round. The Sixers obviously matched the contract, and then the Sixers did not make it past the first round. So those two years are non-guaranteed. It was interesting to me to see Daryl kind of mention him by name as a part of the future plans. Do you think that's a notable takeaway there and a clear sign that Paul will continue to be with this team? I feel like a lot of that was just mentioning that he is under contract. Like, I do think that Daryl still values him, of course, why he matched the deal. But I do feel like a lot of that is just, you know, him mentioning. Like, it would be weird if he didn't mention him, even if his contract isn't um, totally guaranteed. And I want to throw this back to you with a question because I feel like I have a, a much different, you know, takeaway than some, at least some people on Sixers Twitter is that, Paul Reed seems to be like coming under fire a lot. There seems to be always conversations about, is he the right guy? Is he the right backup? And I just like, don't get it. He was not really great against the Knicks, which is tough because they match what he does. And they have a really good backup center in Mitchell Robinson, who's bigger and does what Paul does really well. He wasn't that great in the playoffs, which is fair to, to mention, even if he wasn't the sole reason they couldn't operate without Joel. He, was, he surely wasn't helping. Uh, as a starter, he really struggled a lot, but I felt like he made improvements of his game. He's under contract for like pretty cheap, like eight million, especially for the cap keeps rising, is not that much money. And yeah. he's still young. And I think a lot of people, like even his biggest supporters, didn't expect him to make a big leap. They were kind of just looking at like a guy who hustles a lot, you know, is versatile on defense, is a presence on the boards, and is a fine guy to eat minutes behind Joel. So what do you kind of make of all that? And is like, is there a reason that I'm not seeing as to why people seem to be so out on Paul now? Yeah, so I am a Paul Reed guy in general. Um, to kind of put my full mindset here for starters, I think he's kind of set up for failure to be a backup center to Joel Embiid, that it's just impossible to fill those shoes when that guy steps off the floor, and we've seen that time and time again. I personally really was pro the Paul Reed signing and having this guy as the backup center for the reason that I think it's important to have a different style of play when Joel Embiid steps off the floor, that you're simply not going to be capable of staying afloat just having a worse Joel Embiid coming in as a backup, whether that be DeAndre Jordan or Amir Johnson or Greg Monroe or whoever you want to throw is that guy that pretended to be that. So Paul is different, that he is more switchable. He can switch one through five. He is more just high energy athleticism. I think where some of the disappointment comes in is two main lanes here. For starters, there was a lot of the chatter leading into the year from Nick Nurse's mouth about playing him next to Joel and seeing about expanding his game. We really didn't see that happen pretty much at all. A couple brief moments here and there. And the other part that I think people soured on was during the time without Joel Embiid, seeing Mo Bamba getting these starting minutes, and I get like the the mindset from Nurse is likely to keep Paul within his role. I think people were left a little, I guess, not satisfied that he wasn't able to expand and step into that a little farther. I do think that it, he is over criticized in a, in a general census that I think for the most part, like he wasn't this issue. And I think like from my perspective, what has changed a little bit in the Joel Embiid backup look is how much offensively this team fell apart. Now, granted that can absolutely be covered up if they bring in one of these third options or even like a season like last year where James Harden was the guy capable of generating offense and keeping this team afloat. I don't think we saw that. We saw the offense fall apart in a way different way this year during the non Embiid minutes. So I think it's a lot of things combined. And I think, to be honest, he catches more blame than he should, if I'm being completely honest here. Yeah, I will say, I think it's totally fair to bring in a third stringer that can compete with him as a backup minutes. Like There are times where he really isn't playable, where he gets into foul trouble still, obviously. So I'm, I'm not opposed to the idea of, you know, bringing in another guy to compete with him or to, you know, be the backup on certain nights, just, you know, kind of give him some competition to sort of keep him honest. But I really don't understand what people were expecting from from Paul this year that like people are suddenly like, Oh, I'm out. Like get him off the team. I, I, I don't understand that. He's not the perfect player, but, and maybe part of it is that just that he is like finally a playable backup behind Joel that is young and can do other things that like you kind of mentioned, he's like a, a breath of fresh air from the, the other guys of the past, but I don't know. I mean, I think, I don't think Paul like needs to stick around with the Sixers, but I also don't think they need to like shop him either. <laughs> 